In this video I'd like to show you uh, the new menu system that allows the user to change settings on the fly for uh, all six motors. I'm saying six motors because uh, that's the uh, expansion board for uh, six motors from two that supported before. And, uh, it will be this board that's coming soon, so I'm just had it on the bare board for now. I just want to show some things uh, uh, quickly about the menu and uh, the changes now in the speed regarding uh, having to uh, deal with uh, more than uh, two motors. I had to do some compromise uh, in speed uh, so to have it uh, uh, more stable uh, right now with six motors it runs uh, at uh, 1 kilohertz but that's just for a uh, high resolution of 16 bit that means uh, uh, you can get a uh, better speed using a uh, lower resolution as uh, you can see in the menus I'll, I'll show you in a minute so first of all I'll, I'll uh, zoom here so you can see the menu when uh, the main screen is uh, the one that shows the motor assignments and the bars the bars are uh, just indicators for the position right now the inputs uh, are in the middle uh, that's the data from the computer uh, this is the positionometer uh, area that uh, is the position feedback for the motors I'll show you for example the uh, potentiometer number six. Let's zoom it there. And uh, I'll move it around so you can see the limits. That's just one character long, but uh, that's all you need. Here's the direction for that. And that's the output. Just to note, to note that uh, the purpose of this uh, extension board, the 6 of extension board, is to drive uh, AC motors, so you get the directional uh, digital controls 24 volts and uh, analog uh, direction for 10 volts, 0 to 10 volts. So I'd like to go on the menu. To show you what features I have there. Uh, first of all, you can uh, choose the numbers of uh, uh, motors you want to use because in some applications you may not have to use more than three. Uh, that is there now, that's for six motors right now. But uh, if you click it in the middle encoder, you can. Uh, change the number of these. Now, like I said, uh, the speed depends on the number of motors, so I'll show you here how it changes. That's the loop uh, we were looking before. If I put it for three, four motors, five, and six motors. Let me zoom it out better. That's one kilohertz. That's for five motors, four, three, and two motors. On two motors, the refresh rate is 2.64 kilohertz. That's uh, 2,600 something times per second refresh rate for the motors. So I'll change it back to six. Um, let's go back and show you more. Now the next menu is the data format that receives receives from the serial port. Uh, right now it's sixteen bit. That means uh, it's uh, it will make it a little slower to receive because it's lots of data there for six motors. I can uh, decrease that to 8-bit, oh, let's go back, click once inside, you can change it to 8-bit. Now, I'll go back 
to the motor so you can see something here now that's uh, we change it to 8 bit so for 8 bit you can see for six motors there that's the speed is even bigger than one kilohertz I'll change it for five motors four three get two motors you can see now it's uh, 3.49 kilohertz for two motors only okay let me change it back change this back too and, uh, then the next uh, settings are available are the PID setup uh, the way I set it up is like um, you can have access to all three terms now and uh, you can see what's inside without clicking in there I'll show you the next one, the I integral it's one the derivative, it's two and of course you can click inside one of these and change it uh, to note that uh, this changes on the fly, you don't have to uh, have the motor soft you can see the reaction on the derivative when I increase it I'll put it back down to 2 I don't need that much reaction and uh, the next one is uh, you can change the max speed now the motor if you don't want that much uh, speed when you uh, to go to to one direction or the other one you can decrease it so you don't have that much uh, uh, speed uh, that means that uh, from uh, uh, instead of going for 0 to 10 volts it will go to 0 to for example here oh, let me change it max speed like this for example for 80 percent it will be like 0 to 8 volts max or uh, 6 volts max for the VFD inverter and go on the limit is of course about 30 percent because uh, uh, that should be enough to start the uh, experiment on the max speed you need uh, the next one is the minimum speed the minimum speed uh, can be also defined like the gap between the directions of the motor. Uh, for example, uh, uh, for each direction it goes, uh, you can have a little gap, so you ha ha the motor has time to stop between in the dead, dead zone area. Um, but also you can have it to increase that so for each direction you can have the motor start a little faster because some motors may not react to very low uh, changes and uh, you need some kick to it you know to start it moving um, for example I'll show you here the minimum speed if I change it too much you'll see the potentiometers are starting to go crazy because it's in the middle the limit between the, the two positions of the position it's too little um, you can increase it too much of course uh, in another video i'll show you the analog output exactly what it does so you can you can have an idea about uh, the maximum and uh, minimum speed limit and uh, of course the last one is the feedback limits that's how much uh, the motor is allowed to travel on its direction so you don't uh, break your potentiometer for example uh, for the mechanical limits of the potentiometers or uh, the other or whatever other uh, device you have for feedback could be half effect but still have some mechanical limits um, that should be enough that is to uh, break it 
uh, before it reaches the end of the position you want. Um, also, I added uh, a small uh, kill switch function that is uh, I connected that on the SDA uh, pin of the I2C header. That's actually I don't use the I2C right now, so I'll use that pin to kill the, all the motors uh, in case something happens. You want you need to. Uh, Kill the motion, for example. Here I'll set, for example, two potentiometers of limit, so you can see them there having direction now at some speed. Let me set some speed there. Okay. And um, let's hit the kill switch. Uh, the kill switch actually works just by grounding that pin to the ground. So here I'm just putting it to the ground. You can see when I click it, everything goes off. No more uh, outputs for the motors, so the v VFDs will uh, just stop the motor there. And that's uh, independent from the program. Okay. Now, something more. If you change the number of motors, for example, for four motors or three motors save it you can go back and see only uh, feedback for two motors at the uh, different uh, size bars there or uh, I'll go back for two motors for example and you can see information only for two motors there it changes well uh, that's it for now um oh yeah why not let me let me do some uh, connection to the to the XSIM software so you can see it i'll put it for six motors okay it's 16 bit that's the settings i have the XSIM ready actually and uh, I have the bars, uh, the test uh, plugin with the bars running. So I'll just click on start here. Just for a quick demonstration, so you can see. The this is uh, the bars actually are slower. I don't want them to have too much uh, refresh speed, but uh, the reaction is. Uh, uh, like a thousand times faster in the hardware, so it's just an indicator. You can even turn it off after you set up your uh, controller. That's it. Alright, thanks for watching.